Hello, friends. How is everybody doing? Uh, it's me again, Dustin Coyle, coming at you live on August 4th, 2018. You are tuned in to Intelligent Thoughts. This is episode number 53, UFC 227 Preview. <laughs> said it's me Dustin Coyle episode 53 we're moving right along here it's a beautiful day in Boise like 79 degrees at one o'clock can't really beat that uh it's been hot as hell here for like three weeks been a, at least 96 or 97 degrees for three straight weeks gonna beat the heat here before going on my, my vacation up to the beautiful state of Montana to see some good friends as I already said this is uh, one day removed. Tomorrow is going to be UFC 227 in the or at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. It's going to be an awesome matchup. Uh, we're going to get to that here in a second, though. Figured I would recap last week's fight, or fight card, I would say. The Alvarez-Poirier fight, uh, UFC, what was it, on Fox, number 30 or whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, we'll just get right into it. I mean, it's, I guess the... The most significant, uh, you know, thing that happened there was obviously the main event. Dustin Poirier wins by a knockout or a TKO, a second round TKO after being uh, hit with an illegal 12 to 6 elbow by Eddie Alvarez and apparently given a wet willy um, and uh, just kind of cheated a little bit. Referee Mark Goddard uh, stood stood it back up. Uh, took the advantage away from uh, Eddie Alvarez there, and uh, Dustin Poirier came back to win uh, with some just great striking punches and some elbows to uh, knock out Eddie Alvarez and really catapult himself up to the you know the very very top of uh, the lightweight rankings. Um, a lot of people were wondering if he was going to get a title shot. It looks like he's going to be fighting Nate Diaz of the co-main event uh, on UFC 230. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the New Year's Eve show. Um, so a big, big win there for Dustin Poirier, especially, uh, after the no contest in the first fight. Um, you know, I'm sure that's, that feels really good for them. That's actually two straight fights though, that Eddie Alvarez against Poirier, at least that Eddie Alvarez has committed, uh, a, you know, a, pr a pretty big foul, whether it be the 12 to six elbow, which he got cited for in this fight, or whether it be the illegal knee to the head, which happened in the original fight with Poirier, um, you know, it's really not a good look for him. And, as I already said before, Dustin Poirier has claimed that he gave him, like, a wet willy at one point in the grappling match where uh, he, he didn't really have a lot of other options, so he just kind of, like, stuck his finger in his ear and tried to fuck with it and shit, which is also banned um, from the rules. So, unfortunately, I mean, I'm a big Alvarez fan. I think he's a beast, but he does come, come out looking a little bit shady in this one. Uh, you know, just the, the two... Super uncommon. I mean, they happen, you know, 12 to 6, six elbows. But it is, it is, uh, I guess, kind of becoming a little bit of a theme with Alvarez. Uh, hopefully that doesn't continue. Also, another big win for a UFC veteran or legend in this case, actually. Featherweight division, Jose Aldo knocks out Jeremy Stevens TKO with a sick body shot. Sick, sick body shot left hook. Um that actually dropped Stevens, and then it took him probably about a minute or so uh, to finish Stevens on the ground. But um, and that's actually after Stevens looked better. I thought Stevens was really tagging Aldo earlier in the fight. It was a first round knockout, but the first I'd say two minutes of the fight, um, Stevens was winning the fight, really taking it to Aldo. Aldo had the you know pretty similar style as he always does, uh, but. The, the big hook to the body ended up winning the fight for him. So that's a huge, huge win for him, uh, especially, at, you know, at this stage in his career. How, you know, he's getting older, or he, at least he's, you know, has a lot of, you know, experience, ring experience. 
uh, to possibly get him back into a, a possible title scenario fight, depending on what happens at featherweight uh, with Holloway and, and whatever. Uh, women's strawweight division, Joanna Jacek beat Tisha Torres 30-27 to on all cards. Looked really good. New striking on point again. Uh, kind of just back to the old Joanna. She is also calling out Rose. That she wants she wants to rematch with Rose. Uh, kind of a lot of drama there. Possibly talk about that later. But in this fight, Joanna definitely looked like the same, you know, the champion that she was before. And, uh, you know, looked damn good. I, I don't see how there's really any scenario where she's not the number one contender. I know that Rose, I'm pretty, I think, has another fight already booked. But after that, I don't, I don't see how there's any possible scenario where Ian Jacek is not the number one contender for the uh, belt in that one. And then with the rest of the fights, I'm going to just give you a little rundown, uh, a quick one. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Lightweight division, Alexander Hernandez beats Olivier Aubin Mercier. Uh, unanimous decision on that one. Jordan Mean in the welterweight division defeats Alex Morono. Uh, unanimous decision on that one. To the featherweight d- division, Hakeem Dewodu defeats Austin Arnett. Another unanimous decision. Super fun. Islam Makachev defeats Cajun Johnson, a first-round submission with an armbar. Uh, and into the light heavyweight division, Ian Kuchilaba, TKO victory in the first round over Gadzimir at Antigula, punches and elbows. Back to the lightweight division, John McDessie gets a unanimous decision victory over Ross Pearson. To the women's flyweight division, Caitlin Shukajian gets a unanimous decision victory over Alexis Davis. To the flyweight division, uh, Taekwondo black belt. Dustin Ortiz gets a KO, head kick and punches, uh, first round knockout over Matthias Nicolau. Back to the women's strawweight division, Nina Ansaroff defeats Ronda Marcus, unanimous decision. And the first fight of the night, Devin Powell beat at Alvaro Herrera with a TKO, body kicks and punches. That's a first round knockout there. All righty, that's a full recap there of last week's fight card. Let's go ahead and move on, look towards the future here. Like I said, UFC 227 coming at you tomorrow. It's going to be an awesome fight. Two championship belts are going to be on the line. We're going to get that to uh, get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and start with the prelims. I'll give you a little bit of that information, and we'll get into the full fight breakdowns. All righty, first fight of the night coming on the super preliminary card here. We're going to go to the bantamweight division. We have Marlon Vera. Versus Wuliji Buren. Uh, Vera 10, 5, and 1, 6 submissions, black belt in jiu jitsu. Fighting out of Chone, Ecuador. He's going to be a minus 400 favorite over Wuliji Buren, plus 300. Buren is 9 and 4. Uh, fighting out of Inner Mongolia, China. Can't find a bunch more information on him on that one. To the women's straw weight division, we have Danielle Taylor versus Zhang Wei Li. Taylor's record is 4-1, and one, three knockouts, fighting out of Van Nuys, California. She's coming in at a plus-195 uh, underdog. Wei Li, on the other hand, a minus-250. 17 pro fights to her name, 16 wins, just one loss, nine knockouts, and six submissions, fighting out of Hebei, China. It's a pretty good fight there for the undercard. All right, we go back to the bantamweight division. We have Ricardo Hamos versus... Kyung Ho Kang, Hamos 11 and 1, six submissions, uh, fighting out of Black Sheep in Caminas, Brazil. He's going to be a, pl- or a minus 250, going to be the favorite there, excuse me. Uh, Ho Kang, a plus 195, a record of 14, 7 and 1, with 10 submissions, fighting out of Busan, South Korea. Uh, and then the final preliminary card here is going to be between Jose Torres and Alex Perez, or Jose Torres, excuse me on that one. Talking all this uh, Jose Aldo, getting my words mixed up. Uh, Torres, 8-0, four knockouts, fighting out of KHK MMA in Chicago. He's going to be a plus-125 underdog. On the other side, Perez is a minus-155, 20 wins, four losses, fighting out of Team Ochoa in Lemoore, California. And we move on to the FX fight uh, preliminary fight card here. Uh, the first fight that you're going to see, you have Matt Sales versus Shaman Moraes. Uh, Sales, 7-1, and one, 6 knockouts, fighting out of Alliance MMA in San Diego with the boy Dominic Cruz. He's going to be uh, 
a minus 140 favorite, and Mariah Ash can be a plus 110 underdog. Uh, nine wins, two losses, five of those coming from knockout. So this should be a damn good fight as far as striking is concerned. He's uh, fighting at a black house in Rio de Janeiro uh, with the legend Anderson Silva. So that should be a pretty awesome fight there. We go back to the bantamweight division. A lot of bantamweight fights here. There's actually, I think, one, two, three more bantamweight fights that we haven't even talked about yet. This one's going to take place between Ricky Simon and Montel Jackson. Uh, Simon, 13-1, and one, overall record, fighting out of Gracie Baja, Portland. Obviously a jiu-jitsu guy there. He's going to be a minus-190 favorite. Mo uh, Montel Jackson, a plus-155, undefeated at 6-0, and oh, fighting out of Red Schaefer MMA in Milwaukee. And then our first matchup with a ranked fighter, still the bantamweight division. We have the number nine ranked Pedro Munoz taking on the number 14 ranked Brett Johns. Munoz is 15, 3 and 1. Nine of those wins coming by submission. A black belt in jiu-jitsu fighting out of ATT Coconut Creek. He's going to be a minus 265, pretty sizable favorite there. Johns, on the other hand, a plus 205, 15 and 1 overall record. Black belt in judo, purple belt in jiu-jitsu, brown belt in Thai. Uh, a little bit of an all-around fighter there. He's going to be fighting out of Swansea, Wales in the UK. All righty, this takes us to the main event on or pay-per-view. Get your $100 ready. It should be a pretty goddamn good one. Like I said, two championship bouts in this fight, two rematches. Uh, both for championships, one of them, one of the most heated rivalries in MMA. Something I've been looking forward to for a long time. I, I, got, the, uh, I got the call wrong for the last fight. I actually had uh, Garbrandt defending his belt against TJ Dillashaw. Not terribly surprised with the knockout, but, um, you know, like I said, I got it wrong last time. Big ups to Dillashaw on, on that fight, but we're going to see the rematch here. I'm going to get to that here in a little bit. We're going to start in the featherweight division with uh, a match, a matchup of uh, relatively highly ranked fighters here. We have on one side the number five ranked Cub Swanson, and on the other side the number ten ranked Hanato Moicano. As we know, just recently Cub Swanson was you know the precipice of uh, another title shot. Um, but then, you know, the loss to Brian Ortega obviously set him up the second round guillotine in a fight again that Cub Swanson looked good in. Uh, you know, it's kind of Brian Ortega's Omada. That's just kind of what he does. Um, and then after that, again, Frankie Edgar, another fight this, uh, this April, what, three months ago, four months ago, that, you know, could have projected him back up into the title conversation, uh, especially with Holloway injured now, but he, uh, lost that by a decision. Uh, so that's back-to-back -back losses for him. His last win was April of last year in a fight of the night uh, a victory over Artem Lobov. Um, sort of a, a tough a tough time for Cub Swanson right now. He looked really good a year between a year and two years ago. Knockout power still there. Honestly, kind of looked kind of looked like a, a bigger version of Cody Garbrandt almost. Super powerful hands. Love to box. Can wrestle if he needs to. Uh, tenacious as shit. Just, just somebody you, you know, a, a badass. And right now, I, I still think he's the same guy. Frankie, losing to Frankie Edgar is uh, nothing, you know, nothing to be disappointed at. I mean, he was an ex 155 pound champion. So I mean, you know, he's one of the greatest of all time, honestly, that nobody talks about. Uh, but so for Cub Swanson, I mean, you basically got to try to right the ship here, and uh, probably at 34 years old, push your way back to one more serious title shot most likely since you're at a such a light division here uh swanson his breakdown here record of 25 and 9 eight knockouts seven submissions obviously well-rounded uh heavy-handed you know that's where those knockouts are coming from 10 and 5 in the ufc standing at five foot seven 70 inch reach i already mentioned the 34 years of age not getting any younger you know kind of pushing pushing the end of uh you know, what might be his fight career, or at least his prime, but clearly in his fight career. Black belt in jiu-jitsu from Hegan Machado. No, no, made no bullshit right there. Black belt in ju uh, judo, excuse me, fighting uh, in Albuquerque with Jackson and Winklejohn. Pretty much the best school. On the other side, Hanato Moicano coming off of a unanimous decision victory over Kelvin Qatar. 
back up 